Joseph is a unique figure in our scripture. Not because of his righteousness, not because of his profound faith. Joseph is unique because he is a stepfather. Our scripture has many father figures, it has many role models. But Joseph is the only example of a stepdad. And Joseph wasn't just any stepdad. Joseph was the stepfather of the Son of God. I cannot imagine this kind of monumental responsibility. Raising kids as a step-parent is hard enough. Imagine what Joseph went through. I am, I am picturing Joseph arguing with an eight-year-old Jesus and Jesus saying to him, you're not my real dad. It could be its own sitcom. Or not. Joking aside, I, I want you to imagine for a second our gospel message and imagine it as something that is happening today. Perhaps to people that you know, perhaps to people in this congregation. Our story begins with Joseph. Maybe his friends call him Joe. And Joe was a good guy. Righteous in every way. And Joe, he, he was married. He was engaged to be married to a to a nice young woman they marry. Well, during their courtship, Joe found out that Mary was with child, that Mary was pregnant. And uh, Joe was understandably confused. Uh, this was, I would say, a complicated situation for everyone, especially for Joe. In fact, I'm sure in the community, amongst their families, it was kind of a scandal. She was engaged to marry and now she was pregnant. Joe was the father. They weren't married yet. At this point, no one would have blamed Joe for feeling embarrassed. And likewise, Joe you know, he kind of broke it off. The engagement just quietly moved on. No harm, no foul. The community would have understood. Until Joe was approached by an angel in a dream. And the angel explained to him that this was no ordinary child. Mary was pregnant the Son of God. The angel said, you will call him Jesus and he is here to save the world. Just imagine the level of responsibility that Joseph felt. It all made sense. It was going to be his responsibility to raise the Son of God as his own child, as his own son. And yes, the people of his community, they would probably never understand. For them, this would continue to be a scandal. But that didn't matter anymore. Joseph had a much much bigger task ahead. He was going to be the stepfather of the Messiah. To take care of Jesus, to, to raise him right, teach him manners, so one day he was all grown up. He could save the world. Joseph could have said no to any of this, but 
he didn't. This job was too important. You know, throughout my life, I've known a lot. A lot of stepfathers. And I gotta say, they do have a job that is essential. It can almost be an impossible job with how often it seems to go unappreciated. I mean, and how do you fill someone else's shoes like that? Someone else to, to be this surrogate father thing, the surrogate father. You know, our, you know, our popular media, it doesn't help. You know, I, I tried to find positive representations of stepfathers in our movies and television, and let me tell you, the best that I could do was the Brady Bunch. And a little bit of um, maybe, maybe Will Smith from Independence Day. But he kind of spends most of the movie fighting aliens, so you don't get much into a win window into his parenting skills. Most often, stepdads are portrayed like we often see evil, you know, like stepmothers and wicked stepsisters. They are portrayed as either abusive or buffoons. Step families just don't get a lot of leeway these days. And you know, it's not fair. It's not fair. I'm going to be a stepdad, and I take this personally. Which is why I love Joseph so much. You know, when you think about it, you know, when you think about it, like, Jesus' home, even Jesus' home had all of the elements of a modern family. There he was, you know, he lived with his mom and his stepdad, and uh, it was unique because you could say that Jesus even had three parents. If, uh, if, you, if, you, count, if you count God, which we should. And in addition to, to this triad, we also had Jesus' uh, many half-brothers and half-sisters. And yes, Jesus had siblings. Our scripture is very, it is pretty clear on that. And this kind of non-traditional family that Jesus lived in, If really, it's, it's the rule. It's not the exception. Every family that I know has a unique flavor to it. Every family that I know has all of those quirky elements. I mean, all these, I mean that's, what, that's what my family is like. There's no such thing as a normal family. We're all unique in our own cool and quirky ways. Even Jesus' family, he really had the original modern family. And in addition to all this, I love Joseph because he is a symbol of every caretaker that I know, every teacher, every mentor, every counselor. Every surrogate parent that I know. You know, it kind of makes me think of Joseph. Lifting up that mantle to take care of this kid. And in fact, for me, it even redefines what it means to be part of God's family. And there is a lot of redefinition going on these days. We're redefining our relationships. We are redefining what it even means to be 
God's family. As we, we gather together with one another, but we can't get too close. We can't even, we can't even show our faces. We are a family, but we can't hug or touch. But there is hope. There is always hope. Today begins the season of Advent. Now, Advent in our church, it means beginning, it means preparation, it is the beginning of the church year. And with this comes newness and revival and an opportunity to embrace new beginnings and be brave, to be brave, to rejoice, to be glad, to take on what's in front of us even when we don't know what tomorrow will bring. We know that God is with us and God will lead the way and take care of us no matter what happens, just like Joseph when he answered God's call. He didn't know what was going to happen next. And neither do we. We never do. We never do. But you know that new beginning? It's, it's arrived. It's here. In fact, it's always arriving, that newness. It's just to find that arrival and to grab onto it. A new beginning for you, for me, for Joseph, for all of us. As we prepare for Christmas in this brave new world, to look at our world, to answer God's complicated call and say yes as a family. So may the peace that surpasses all human understanding in your hearts and your minds, Jesus Christ of God. Amen.